You want to do a dance show? Nah, wanna... nah, we're good, man. We're good. How we doing? <laughs> What's up? How about that dramatic entry? We, we were right? gonna we were gonna beatbox a little bit, but we decided not to. <laughs> Thought about but it. We did bring a guest in to kind of help us out, just in case things went south. Um, you know what? If they do go south, we do have Drew in the comments, so uh, <laughs> so he can fix everything. He can tell you what we did wrong, but he's not gonna be able to fix it for us. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can't know, remote in anymore. Well, not where he's at. He can't even get a text message right now. <laughs> what he's on? Yeah. yeah, I don't think I'm not expecting it. I think this is a test, Mike. <laughs> anyway, I, I expect more out of him. Man. Happy uh, Thursday. I think that. Hold on, man. I was trying to figure out what I was going to pour, and you're like, "We're going to have plenty of that." It's true, <laughs> right? I mean, he left it for us. He said he didn't want any, right? So honestly, happy Thursday, everybody. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers to you guys. Mike, nice Cheers. to see you. Cheers nice to, to see everybody you. that's nice on. We'll you. go through that and see who's hey, there guys. in just a second. Well, I'm excited to have Mike on the bar. See what's going on with uh, with this guy? He He's actually, got a couple of special bottles that you brought him that we can. That'd have be him fun. Dig into yeah, a bit I'm excited to see what he thinks about that, and I know somebody on the show is excited to see what he thinks about him as well. So, um, what Something else is new. going on? Who we got online? Looks like our who is first? That's the question. Uh, I don't know. Where is that, Cam Redick? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, all, most of the folks from the pre-show are here. I see. Jesse yeah. says naked grouse is really good in my opinion. Probably one of the best malt blends out there. I don't think you're alone in that. No. We're going to get into some of the comments from our review. <laughs> um, and uh, a lot of people kind of shared that sentiment. So too slow. Uh, Rostislav traps. Evening. Drew Bills. What do we say to See? that guy? <laughs> Cheers, brother. I hope you're having fun on vacation. Relax. We probably won't break anything. It doesn't look like they'll break anything, but it looks like somebody broke something. <laughs> hey, by the way, Drew, we need to check your ring doorbell. I left you a little message this afternoon. <laughs> and we will be wow. leaving one later. And that's why I don't have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> one lost cause in Trooper Henry. So, you guys, we've got a good show. We're going to talk about this naked grouse. We're going to get into it. And then we're going to move the, the conversation to blends in general. Um, we're going to talk the difference in blends, what they are, where they come from, some of the details. Looking for some comments. There's a lot of people out there that have got, got a lot of different blends. We brought a couple different blends to yep, We've even got one that we've never had before. Yeah, we're, we're going to open one that we're excited about seeing what that what brings. But um, we do have some interesting scotch in the news to talk about as well. And some fun stuff. And Finally. 11,000 subscribers, man. What? Hot freaking what? damn. How'd that happen? Oh, Good my job, gosh. Guys. We love you guys. Thank you so much for we that. We appreciate it. It took us five years to get there, but I'm so proud of it. I'm amazed by it, to mm -hmm. be honest. Yeah. A lot of cool people that have uh, become part of this journey along the way. It's it's. From around the world. Well, yeah. I mean, we just left the pre-show for patrons, by the way. If you're not a patron, we do do a patron pre-show and post-show to our lives. And so one of the patrons jo joined the uh, pre-show uh, is Mark, and he's in China. It just blows my mind that a guy can zoom in from China, and, and we can talk about scotch and stuff. Yeah. So we get people from all cool. over the place. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. If you're not a patron, get on there. If you are a patron and you're not on the Zoom, you're missing out. Yeah, it's you, a lot of fun. You're missing out on a, on a good conversation and a lot of uh, – a lot of scotch swapping going on between the patrons too. So Certainly not. we were talking about that beforehand as well. Right. Um, so let's talk mm. about this naked grouse, man. Let's get let's get naked on this thing. All right, here. so mm. let's get naked on this thing. Um, we I pulled up the comments uh, to read about it, and darn near everybody is on board with naked grouse. Even this guy, I wore I wore his shirt because he commented on our our video. Um, haven't talked to Roy in a while, and he made a comment, and in his mind. Naked grouse actually goes toe to toe and is, if not better than monkey shoulder. So I found that really interesting. And he did throw down the challenge that we needed to do a comparison. So, ah, and you know, the, we never maybe never we pass did. up a chance to have a good <laughs> drink. Like, like, what are you talking about? Pick it up. Uh, <laughs> Twist that arm. Yeah. I will say that I really enjoyed our review of this one only because the ones that are most interesting to me are the ones where we disagree. Right. And, and where there's a wider range of, of how everybody feels about it. I don't think anybody thought that this was not a good bottle. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, so, Matthews. But I see but I, I think that there was a lot of disagreement on uh, maybe there. quality versus price and and where that landed on your palate and how Apparently you felt you are, about buddy. the bottle itself. So 
ironically enough, reading the comments, it really made me excited for tonight's show because I wanted to try another glass of this. I was yeah. like, all right, you know what? The review was one thing, but you know how things can change. You know, whether it's sure. your mood, what you ate, what's going on with your palate that day. Um, I got a bottle of this. I poured into a decanter at home, and I, I hit that thing all the time. So I know it's I like readily stuff. available. Right. I see yeah. it all the time. So. Right. And it's – so let's get into it. Again, it's a nice dram. It's got some nice – malty goodness up front get a little bit of that that sherry influence ish and it's got a nice spicy finish to it i mean for what did we say this was 35 bucks give or take yeah, yeah. i mean that that's a very reasonable price for this i think and it, it packs a lot of punch in that 35 dollars. i don't it, it hits above its weight class how about that and it is it's blended malt yes right so you're so, not getting that grain dilution if you will um, so it, it has that heavy mouthfeel of a, of a malt whiskey. Um, so I, I think it gives you a lot of what you like and not much of what you don't like. Hey, John DeVoe. Good to see you on the show. I haven't seen you on the live show in a while, man. Keeping tabs on you on Facebook though. Um, so stalking, <laughs> yeah, a little stalking. light stalking, <laughs> a little light stalk, right? <laughs> Does it still taste like iodine today? That's why I just poured it, uh, Alejandro. I'm, uh, I'm curious to see that myself. I... I still get a little bit of that iodine and it's got a little bit of the spice to it. Um, the spice is a, a little bit heavy on the finish, to be honest. I think this makes an excellent cocktail, which a lot of these blended malts in that price range, well, that's what they're for. Um, if you're, if you're doing a scotch and water with, with like a, a J and B or, or a doers or something like that, which is what most bars would have something like that, like a, a blended scotch whiskey, it's going to be a much lighter drink than something like this that is a is a blended malt right. and has a lot heavier flavor profile to it. Uh, so to me, you know, something like the Naked Grouse or the Monkey Shoulder is going to give you, like if you made a Rob Roy with that, it's going to be pretty good. And at the price point, you're not going to have to pay, you know, $83 for a cocktail. So, and it would end up being something that you could enjoy. I still get a small sulfur note on the nose. Um, at least right now, but it's rich on the palate. And, you know, I almost made Rob Roy's with that tonight just to do it. Yep. Uh, cause I bet they're awesome. And then I got distracted and so I've got all the ingredients upstairs. Uh, Porter, a uh, Sunday evening scotch. He said around, around here, it's 26 to 30 bucks. I got it for 26 to 30 bucks, man. It's just, there's a lot to chew on in it. You know, I yeah. mean, what? It's, I mean, it's, it's there's nothing wrong with the glass itself. It's even in the grocery stores too. Right. So, and I, I liked it better than the what, famous what, what did our average score come out to? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. No, because the math was hard on that one. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we did everything from what, a two to a three, five? Yeah. So, I mean, it. So, but when you want to talk three, about those, those scores, the three, five was Drew. Yeah. And Drew got the most praise in comments this week. A lot of people were on board with him. Uh, and gave him a lot of praise for calling it a three-five. The, the other three, we got beat up a little. I don't say we got beat up, but they, you know, they, we didn't get any praise like Drew did. And maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong. It, it's called the I naked think, old man. <laughs> who says that? <laughs> of course, it's Tom. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's good, and I think it's damn good for the price. Uh, like I guess yeah. I have a bottle on it, and I don't see why you wouldn't have a bottle for that money. I mean, I don't feel guilty drinking it. No, I, I think twice about it. But I also would hesitate to give it a super high score just because I think that to me, when I give something, anything above a three, I'm, it's got to have some depth and complexity. And not that this doesn't have some decent depth for the price, but I just don't think that it. What did you score? I don't even I remember. remember. Two, two, five. Two, five, I think. Um, it's been a minute. I totally it's, forgot to look. It's been a week. Are you kidding me? I don't know what I have for breakfast. Mike. Um, <laughs> so, but I really enjoy this bottle. And if you're looking at it versus the monkey shoulder, it's got nice color. I mean, probably that's E150, but that's okay. I mean, it looks nice. I'll take it. Um, you know, at the end of the nice day, bottle. loosen your tie or kick off your heels and enjoy. That's what it says to do. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm sticking with with what I gave it on our review, which was a two or a two five, somewhere around there. Um, and I don't want people to think that's bad. Like I said, I, I have a bottle at home and I'll buy, I'll replace it when it's gone just because uh, 
I can, and why wouldn't I? I mean, it's just like monkey shoulder. I got a bottle of that all the time. Um, we're going to break out some other blends here in just a few minutes, and I've got a few more of those on my bar all the time. I mean, they're not overly expensive blends, but, you know, it's not like I can afford to go out and get some of those high-end compass boxes and replace those whenever I want. But uh, That's true. Well, but, you can. Um, <laughs> you can. You can. But you got bills to pay, too. Um, but I guess if you drink enough, you don't worry about those bills. Right. right. COVID bills. Not COVID bills. We're not planning on retiring, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I do want to call out Bud Matthews. He hasn't been on a live show in quite some time. Are you been that busy, Bud? New baby keeping you down? Hopefully, I'm, I'm thinking you, possibly. you guys are well and uh, doing all right Cute out baby. there. It's good to see you, though. Yeah, it's Cute good baby. to see you online, man. I like his pictures. I, so... I really was curious about what we ranked the monkey shoulder. So yeah, Greg Styles says monkey shoulder is overrated for the price. All right, so let's talk about it. Well, what's the, monkey shoulder right? usually about twenty eight ish? Twenty eight to thirty? Yeah, 28. it's it's so literally same, same, price, same yeah. price, man. All right, this just this, smelling it. This one has more complexity than this. One. Do we have this poured yet? Which one? The monkey shoulder. No. I'll rinse this guy out. I just I use this for that. Uh, the blind sample Mike brought over. He tricked us with the Japanese. You want to know what our ratings were on the monkey shoulder? Yeah, once you you're ready for that? Go on. We've reviewed monkey shoulder twice. Our initial review was in 2017. So that was when you guys got back from New Orleans and yep. were like high on the so, hog about monkey so shoulder. It, it's been a while. Um, when we initially reviewed it, every single one of us gave it a 2.5. Okay. 2.5 across the board. All right. All right. Since then, oh, we we've talked up Monkey Shoulder quite a bit. We have since we, we first tried it, right? Uh, we we were big Monkey Shoulder fans, and so we did a re-review in 2020. Uh, we have the following scores on Monkey Shoulder for the re-review: Andrew three five, Mark three five, Sean three five, Drew four. I remember when he did that, and he even said he was going to regret it and get beat up for it. But, but now looking back on it, so he gave he gave Monkey Shoulder a four. He gave Naked Grouse a three five. I mean, Drew gave high marks for these, but, and he figured value into it. Let's let's put another twist into it though. But now that you guys you guys have reviewed so much, now you're trying now you're looking at it a little bit different than you used to, because now you're putting value. To taste, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. But our re-review, we did. But in your re-review, so you're looking at taste versus sculpt malt, Scotch malt whiskey society. You're looking Tam do batch one. You're you know a lot higher quality ones, and you're looking at this one. And you're like, it's a good taste. So that that scores high as it is, yep. and then you're bringing in value twenty six dollars. This is damn good stuff for twenty six dollars, and I don't have to spend that one hundred and twenty five dollars to get something good. So, just a person from the outside watching, be, knowing you guys, and watching the videos, and knowing these people, I've noticed some growing in the way you guys have started scoring. So that's just what I. Yeah, see. I mean, I, that's nice. That, that's being gentle, Mike. <laughs> Sometimes I, I look back and I, I look at old reviews and I think about my scoring. And uh, I'm not the most consistent about always taking price in. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And, you know, to be fair, you, you need to either be uh, one way or the other to really score. Pro but uh, to me, the, the last five years has not been about a number. It's not been about scoring. It's right. been about the journey. It's been about the perception, the nose, the taste, not so much some number. People but get now, up on the But number. now you know something that's $200 a bottle. You know sure. that taste. Yeah, absolutely. You know how that feels. You know that, you know, you know those little fragrances and those little True. taste buds, the way it's hitting the taste buds. Now you, then you taste this, you're like, Wow, I'm still getting that. Right. I, that's it's true. It's not that two hundred dollar bottle. Right. But good point. I think for me, when I when I go through and look at it as a value thing, it's not necessarily could I get could I get this cheaper? You know what I mean? It's okay. This this bottle's thirty dollars or fifty dollars or two hundred dollars. What else can I get for that money? Right. Am I likely to go buy this versus that? You know. And so I take that into consideration. 
you know, if I spent two hundred dollars on a bottle, would I be okay with that? Do I do I feel like I got my money? Do I enjoy this bottle? If you bought it, yes. Right? Or do I feel like I'm getting kind of beat up on it at the end of the day? There has been a bottle or two in the last five years that I've bought and said, damn man. I could have bought, bought two of those I mean, two right. or three of those other ones, yeah. I, I, it's thankfully few and far between. I don't really ever have those that, that guilt on it. I usually, I, I just enjoy it for what it is. But comparing these two, what do you think? Don't don't think I, about the number. Tell me what you get. Tell me what. Here's here's I what I get. Say. The so the the naked grouse to me, you know, you you get that sherry influence. Absolutely, and you can tell. Absolutely, you know what I mean. And it, it's on the nose. It's on the palate. It's it's very pronounced. Um, and when you Definitely. take a sip of it, it's got those nice sherry notes up front. Like I said, it, it fades into some iodine and, and a little bit of, you know, a fair amount of spice, honestly, at the end of it, the monkey shoulder is just a lighter scotch. Absolutely. There you go. Great so, styles. So, Key for, question. so for this, I would say naked grouse would be more of a, a space side sherry finished versus a Highland style lighter, fruitier, more honeys, more floral, um, just a little bit different scotch. I think they're both very good. They're just a little bit different. Um, honestly, the first sip I took of the monkey shoulder, I was like, oh, I'm going to beat this up a little bit maybe. But the, I, I think it was just a palate difference because it didn't have those sherries. And so when I took the first sip, I was like, I don't get anything. It's just kind of um, kind of the booze, Level, really. Yeah. And then when I went back for the second sip, it kind of cleared all that out of my palate. And when I went back for the second sip, I was like, oh, well, there's honey and there's floral. Sure. It's, it's it's actually very nice. So before I tell you what I think about it, let's ask, let's answer Greg's question here. If monkey shoulder was 65 bucks, would you still love it? That's pretty mm -hmm. much doubling it. 65 bucks. I honestly, I think I'd still enjoy the bottle. I mean, but at $65, they're probably giving you something a little bit more than that. I mean, you're talking a $28 to $30 bottle. So if they're charging 65 bucks, it's probably like monkey shoulder 12 year. And they're putting right. it in a barrel for a while and they're letting it age and get a little bit more maturity. And then they're charging you 65 bucks. So I, I think that either way, you know, I mean, it's kind of not a fair question. You know, any, I, mean, I see where he's going with it. But yeah. any whiskey, if they doubled the price, I'd be like, maybe not. I can find something else. You know, you, you've bumped it into a different price category. And so I think I've got to reconsider a little bit, but it's still a nice, well-rounded scotch. I don't have a problem with it. Right. To me, if you're um, a McKellen 12 guy, you like that McKellen 12, but you realize McKellen likes it more than you do. And it's pretty salty on price. Yep. This one, this yep. is your moneymaker, man. You'll drink it and love it for a third of the price and you won't go wrong. This is much more of a traditional Highland spirit. I'll be honest with you, after it sat in the glass, I put it away, had a couple sips of this guy, came back, to, the sweetness came out of the monkey shoulder. It's so much more sweeter right now. Yep. Um, they're just two different styles. I'm not going to say I like one more than the other. I love the fact that I actually have an option. I have a yep. choice. I go to the bar and both of these sit in my bar. Am I wanting that sherry influence? Do I want that richness of that sherry? Or do I want that lighter, sweeter monkey shoulder? I'll, it's, it's perfect. Can't go wrong. I honestly, I think you deserve to have both of them on your bar, but I know, you know, finance it's like is like making an art, uh, Rob Roy, either with a lot of villain or a monkey right. shoulder. Right. Do you want Pete or not? Do you want to be hit in the face with some Pete? Then do that. If not, I agree. Naked grouse tastes just like Mac 12, says Alejandro. Well, cheers to you on that. <laughs> so I, I think that they're just. You know, I think it's fun because they're both blended malts and you don't see a whole lot of those, at least in the States. Man, that dark chocolate just came out of that. But they're they're both very good. The good representations of what they are trying to do. Yeah. I uh, can't go wrong with them. And the price is right on both of them. I'm disappointed that we took so long to find this one. To be I, agreed. I mean, we did the other two grouses. What was it? The one was uh, Smoky. Smoky Grouse. And we did... Um, Famous grouse. Famous grouse. Right. And to me, this is the best one of all three. Travis. But Travis Faircloth. Hey Travis. hey, Travis. Something went in the mail to you, buddy. I hope you get it. I hope it uh, doesn't turn up in some post <laughs> delivery guys. <laughs> anyway, that's Christmas another story. Best. That's a story for yeah. the patrons that we just got uh, told. But anyway, um, we're gonna we're gonna 
you want to take a time out and do some scotch in the news? Yeah, and then we'll come and back then and we'll do come some back and talk about I think that's blends. A good break. So I don't know how to pull up. We're not that guy. I, I don't. Is it possible to pull up screens? I don't know. And I don't know how to. Pull you're gonna it. you're gonna break things, man. Yeah, I don't want to poke around, you guys, because we don't have the maestro here. Um, but we do have some interesting things in Scotch in the News. So I'm going to minimize this so we can't even see it. We just have to trust that it's there. <laughs> uh, that's the wrong one. So anyway, let's go. Let's pull up this um, Scotch in the News tab. And, and we're going to go way back over to here. And uh, you know what I can do? I can put the comments in the stream so that you guys can follow the article that we're pulling off of. This was pretty interesting. He's always learning something new. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I found this, uh, my the, the spirits <laughs> business, the 10 best selling scotch whiskey brands, right? I'm like, ah, this will be interesting. And I gotta be honest, it was more interesting than I thought it was gonna be because there's a couple of them I'm like, that's the, what, the top 10? I've never even seen it on a shelf. I mean, but, but yeah, America is not the only market. Exactly. exactly. We live in the middle of Indiana and in the middle yeah. of the United States. So um, number 10 was Bell's. Not so surprising, but if you look at the percent change between 2018 and 2019, she took a hard fall, 14.7%. Um, so that's pretty disappointing. Do they see this? Or do they see I know, but they, they don't they see the this, but I, okay. I provided them the link. So anyway, I want you to also pay attention that 2019, Bell sold 1.9 million Bottles. I'm not sure if that's bottles or, or cases. 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 1.9 million cases. Okay, so that was Bell's. So we moved to number nine, so and we got that's 12 bottles to a case. Right. <laughs> label number five. Never even heard of label number five. That's a limited edition, though. That that looks like some stuff that Andrew picks up when he goes to CVS and brings home for us. So right? you read this and you find out they love this shit in France. I mean, they're buying it, you know, hand over fist, 2.7 million cases. And it moved up 3.5% from last year. So that thing's taking a jump. Let's, let's look, get through this quickly. So black and white is number eight. eight. I've been dying to find a bottle of this just because of their advertising. Back, right. back in, the, in the early 1900s. They were like, yeah. Yeah, those, those two little dogs. Even, even were, into like the 70s. Yeah, They're man, very black popular. And white. Man. Everybody wants to be, I, just to get the bottle. Now, but You were drinking that on an airplane. We could still smoke on one. <laughs> 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 <In a tube. laughs> uh, 2.8 million cases in 2019, black and white. So then we move into number seven. And it's J&B. No surprise. Fair enough. Right, fair enough. I know j and is pretty stinky popular. Three million cases. A lot, of, a lot of times we're not in the liquor store. Somebody's picking up a J&B. Absolutely. Yep. Doers was number six. I expected to see this in the top three. Number six. Was, was it a Doers. certain Doers though? No, the, the brand. Doers, this is the brand. brand just this is brand. Across the board. All, okay. all the Doers combined, they That's sold three million cases. And they're moving up. And they're moving up. Look at their percent change. Three, 6.4% up. Doing it's, something right in, in this year. So number five, William and Lawson's. I, I don't even know what Lawson's that is. William, William, William Lawson's. William Lawson's. I, I don't, somebody tell me if you've had a bottle 3. of William 3. Lawson's. 3.3 million cases. And that's falling from, from 2018. Hmm. So Grant's number four. Again, not surprised there. Grant's yeah. is huge. 4.2 million cases. That's a big jump. And that Are was, these numbers worldwide? Yes, okay. this is this is global. Number four best selling brand of 2019 grants. Number three, Chivas Regal. Okay, not surprised. Chivas seems like it should be higher. Okay, 4.4 million. I'm reading these numbers because when you see number one, I want you to just see that it's not even freaking close. Okay. Okay. Number two, Ballantines. Blown away uh, by this one. Did not expect wow. that. Wow. Look at those fancy bottles, though. I, I bet it's. Ballantines was the number two selling brand globally in 2019. 7.7 hmm. oh. million cases. Ballantines. Wow. There's China. Two there's two bottles to a case. China just right. China just <laughs> bought the shit out of this. Eastern Europe, Brazil, India, and China. So there you go. 7.7 million, guys. 7.7 million. Number one, you know what it is. Johnny. Mm. Yep. 18.4 million cases. And that's a 2.8% decrease from 2018. 
So they're the McDonald's of 11, scotch. 11.4 <laughs> of those is White Walker. Oh. <laughs> That's what's up. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back over to the stream to see what people are saying. But so, I mean, honestly, you guys, all right, if you click the uh, link or you follow along, I know I couldn't show it. White Walker. Yep. But yeah, not my favorite. That's not true. <laughs> I, I mean, well, I, I mean, 8.4 million. Here's the Number thing. Number two was seven. It, Johnny Walker is the McDonald's of Scotch. And, and here's why. They have a dominant quarter what was, market. What was the last, what was the 18 and 19? Go back to that real quick for us. Uh, it goes, oh, it dropped. It okay. dropped. That's what I'm saying. It dropped to but when did, when did when did the when did the White Walker come out? And then when did the those two other those were Game all, of Thrones, all, all of them were 19. All 19? Yeah. That's why it went down. <laughs> Maybe that's why it went down. <laughs> look at the market analyst. But Mike, you, the market analyst. When you look at, you know, when I get trade magazines every year and they talk about, okay, top 100, you know, chain restaurants in, in the world globally. Yeah. And you're going through it and you're like, okay, yeah, they're, they're killing it. You know, you get the Burger Kings and, you know, places like that. And then you get to McDonald's and McDonald's is like more than the next six restaurants all put together. Like they can't even come close to right. touching it. Right. And, you know, they're just a dominant force at this point. And Johnny Walker's kind of like that. Like, they've been pumping the market full of their brand for so long that how are you going to get out ahead of that, you know? And so they're all, a beast. They're all a of the ones that you saw on that list that are coming up the list are all in emerging markets. They're all in China, India, Brazil. Right. You know, they're, they're hitting up people that aren't customers yet, but they want to be. You know? So, a couple of observations. John, Justin, you're right. They're all blends. That's going to be in the next conversation after Scotch in the News. So, remember that comment because we're going to talk about blends, and I think you're going to be astonished to see how many blends are sold every year. It's crazy. So, to go back to the Scotch in the News, the next article literally is just, it's. I won't show you guys the link. It's from the same website, but it talks about the brand champion for 2020. It was number six in the list, Doers, because they had a 6.4% increase from 2018. So big do, Doers made a huge and jump. And they're going 3 million nine liter cases. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. Well, that's a standard 750. 12 bottles. Of 12 bottles. Yep. So Doers was number six in the top 10, but they were deemed the champ of 2020 because of the number, the, the increase in 2019, which 6.4% when some of those went down. Yeah. Some of them went down considerably. Even Johnny, Johnny were, yeah. right. So um, there's another article that I was going to talk to you guys about. I'm not going to give you the link. It's about the new McKellen's. I don't know if you guys know that McKellen has now added two Scotch whiskeys to its double cask range, a 15 and an 18. Just to give you guys a little perspective, the uh, the 15 is going to come in at 135 a bottle at 43% ABV, and the 18, well, she's going to go for 330. I feel like they like their whiskey a lot more than Boy, I do. Boy, they love it. Like a lot more. They than I love it. So the next article, I'm going to send you guys the link. With the 15, I'll just bring this up. I'll stop you real quick. Yeah, because yeah. I was at a local liquor store not too long ago and somebody was it's out already the 15 oh out. it's on the shelf it's on the shelf okay okay and somebody was walking out with six six miles of it and i was like what are they at first i thought it was like what's the the other light blue box triple it's o? a 15 it triple it's o? a 15 triple o? yeah it's the, i know which one talking triple about. triple wood triple right. wood yeah. yeah that was that's been out for a while mm -hmm. that's what i thought it was but then I asked, I was like, what, what, I asked uh, one of the workers, I was like, what, what did they just pick up? I Where was, was like, that was at? At a local liquor store. Oh, just a local liquor store. Okay. Yeah. I was just, I mean, so it was here in town. Yeah. Okay. Um, but they said, no, that's the new one. That's why they bought all six bottles. So they can keep them. I, you know what? I'd like to try them. Maybe we will, but I'm not running out to get them. Let's just say that. So 330 for an 18 year old. See, well, what's, Steve the current, says. what's the current 18s though? <laughs> those are like two, those are almost 300 as it is. Not buying those so, uh, <laughs> Steve, it's pretty hard to love McKellen as much as McKellen does. Um, I just is what it is. I don't know how they keep raising their prices and still selling as much as they do. At some point, there's got to be, you would think people would be like, you know what? 
that, that's kind of pricey. Maybe I'll try one of these other ones instead. In fact, I can buy 12 bottles of some of these other ones for what I pay for one bottle of that. If you like McKellen 12, give this naked guy a try. Right. Uh, for the price, you're going to be like, okay, my McKellen 12, it will sit on the shelf. That's usually about what, 65? 75 to 80 now. It's gone. Oh, up. really? Yeah. It's been a while since I've been then. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. So this next one, I'm going to actually put the link in here because I want you guys to click it and go check this out. But uh, Diageo's got a new range they've got coming out, uh, similar to their Flora and Fauna rank series that they had. It, it reminds me of that. But it's a collectible range, and I want you guys to check this out. Um, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty freaking cool. I wish I had twenty five thousand uh, dollars when it goes on sale because I'd probably try to get it. It's not out. There will be two hundred and I want to say thirty eight complete sets that will go up for sale. Now, hang on. It's um, it's in this article. And if we all go together, so look. If you buy it, the two hundred and thirty eight sets. If you get a set for twenty five thousand dollars USD, you will get the set of eight bottles and each. Bottle comes with a side sample of 20 milliliters, so you don't have to open the bottle to taste the scotch. That's, that's, that's a pretty nice, nice thing to do for 25 grand. <laughs> so they're anticipating people not opening them. I mean, I was that's planning on buying two yeah. sets, and then and I don't so have to. There'll, there'll be a global registration just to be considered to buy them. Um, and then they're, it, it's, they're selling it as a collector's thing. Yeah. So if you look at the, the actual link that I gave them, this guy, uh, da, 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 I can't. Dr. Remember. Jim. Yeah, Jim. so 40 years in the business, he selected Beverage. these. What you're getting yeah. is, uh, I don't know if it's listed in this or the other one, but you're getting a 1971 Cragmore, uh, That's pretty cool. a, a 1988 Singleton, um, which is a 30-year-old. Uh, you're getting a 40-year-old Port Ellen. It's probably awful. If you buy that, that, I'll just take that. Right. <laughs> a 28-year-old Lagavulin, a 26-year-old Klein Leash. Um, how old is this Talisker? Uh, it just says 1988. So uh, I have no, uh, old enough. A 1984 Colila. They're they're all listed on the. the oh yeah, there you there. go. A 48-year-old Cragmore, a 40-year-old Port Allen, a 35-year-old Colila, a 31-year-old Talisker, a 30-year-old Singleton, a 28 Lagavulin, mm -hmm. a 26 Klein Leash, and a 25 Mortlock. Um, <laughs> who wants to give me their sample bottles? <laughs> it still seems. I mean, it's it's still a little salty. I'm not gonna lie. Just looking through the bottles, I'm like, those sound really good, and they're all very expensive bottles. Are they twenty five thousand dollars expensive? I don't know. So Porter <laughs> says, Sunday evening sausage. That's crazy. Made for the collector and flippers. Not a fan of that at all. It's whiskey, not a trophy. Uh, I agree. I wish I could afford it though, because I, I definitely would like to try some of those. I mean, to me, that that set is one of those sucker born every minute situations. You know what I mean? Like. How, how can we make this sound awesome? Like, we're going to give them some value, but we're, we're going to take a little bit of their money. So <laughs> I guess the challenge is for some subscriber out there to uh, go out there and spend a few minutes and price point trying to buy, was, buy bottles of similar that. age from those distilleries. How many bottles were there? Eight bottles. Eight bottles. And I would say the average age was 30 years. Per bottle. So three, a little over three grand a bottle. How much is that? I mean, Port for, Ellen. For the Port yeah. Ellen's probably yeah. For a 40-year-old Port Ellen, it, yeah. it'd be salty. Um, I mean, so some of those I think you're you're getting your Legit, value out of it. Right. And I mean, there's some of them that I mean, 40-year-old Scotch, you don't see a whole lot of that. So I had to put Travis's comment up there because it's truth. <laughs> <laughs> Preach, brother. Preach. Everybody who starts on the journey starts with McAllen and then finds Glen Drone. <laughs> <laughs> No, I should say that in a little back, but it's he's oh. right about that. So there wasn't much more in in the oh, what was that? Did I miss it? I'll buy hundred bottles of monkey shoulder. And call <laughs> that'll work, that'll work, Greg. Um, Never so run out. The uh, the last comment uh, uh, topic that I want to talk about. I'll post the comment uh, the the link in here for you guys to spend some time with it because the list is very long. We won't go over it to uh, to detail here, but basically this. Uh, the 
Forbes posted a, an article about the this year's international whiskey competition winners, and just scrolling through it, trying to find out who's what. It's all hard bag. It's all hard bag and doers. Glen Morangi did fairly well. They represented, but if you liked hard bag, Corey Vreckin or black or black or however you'd say it, I can't um, do that. Obviously, the <laughs> judges liked it. Uh, wow, well, both committed. I can't get behind that one and, though. And it, look at that. Hard uh, bag slammed this list, you guys. If you just spend a few minutes scrolling through this, and you're like, hard bag, hard bag. Glen Morangi did fairly Ooh, good. That's cool. The 14. The 14 Quinta that's Ruben placed first. first. That's yeah. awesome. That that's is good cool. Stuff too. Um, so there, you know, there's a few a few other winners that popped up, like a, a Glen Livet or Aberlour or but for the most part, when you start scrolling through here, you're gonna see art bags, and oh then my. you get down into the blends, and guess who owns it? Doers, 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 doers and some more Imperial doers. Doers doers doers, 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 doers. I didn't even bother to look at the US. Um, so you want to scroll through this real quick? If you want to, I want to scroll through it, Mike. Wow, Eagle Rare 10. Best so American best whiskey. Best American whiskey. Well, 1792. You won't ever see a bottle of that again. No. <laughs> 1792 <laughs> bottled in bond, third place. Straight bourbons. There's a rare eagle 10 again. Yep. See? You never see it again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it slams best first place whiskey. every one of them. Look. Rare eagle. Rare eagle. Old 1792. Hammer. Old Hammer Street. Oh, I see. Full proof snuck in there. So. It, you guys check out the link that I put in the post for for who won, who didn't. You know, if you're interested in that, but it's it's pretty fun to scroll through real quick. But I think you kind of learned something from what Mike and Sean just said about when if you see something that's repeating on that list over and over again, probably not especially gonna, in the bourbon. World. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as soon as as soon as anybody sees an award on there and they slap like a sticker on there, is that the truth? It's, it's flying off the shelf. So. Let's, uh, let's transition on into the, the total conversation of just blends. And I, I want to get into it because my glass is empty and I need to pour something. Yeah, else. I've been waiting. I'm <laughs> so waiting. I'm going to skip the Johnny Walker Black and go to this. I'll, I'll hit the black in a minute, but that's the smoky one. So yep. this, you guys, well, I'm gonna. this is a, an old J&B. Uh, we reviewed this in a lineup yeah. video a while back. This Not is a plastic a, real good. No, this is a 1985. Yeah. I, it's on the box somewhere, but it's an old JMB. I gotta say, it's, it's good, cool. man. It's, <laughs> it's surprisingly good. Right. Honestly, it it rem made me realize why blends were so popular back in the day, and and how they could maintain that because they were pretty stinking good. So to transition into the conversation of blends, let's just talk really about more. what a blend really is. Um, there are five or I guess there are six categories. We were debating this five. Earlier. You might see. Let's just talk about five categories of scotch, right? You've got blended scotch, which is a combination of grain and malt whiskey. Correct. You've got blended malt whiskey, which is these malt. guys. Single malts blended Single together. Single malts blended together, no grain whiskey in it. You've got from different distilleries. From different distilleries. You've got blended grain whiskey. Same thing, just with grain. Then you've got single malt whiskey, and what's which is the uh, single grain whiskey? Single grain whiskey, right? Which so those are the five big hitters, right? We're talking about blends, so we could talk about blended and, malt. And blended malt is a, a pretty small category. Give a couple uh, examples, though. We've got two. We've of got them right two. Here. So monkey shoulder and, and naked grouse would both be blended malt. So there's no Johnny grain Walker's whiskey green in it. would be a blended malt. And and so you get a different mouthfeel. It's got it's got a different characteristics than than your blended scotches. Right. But blended scotch whiskey, so grain whiskey and malt whiskey blended together, that's the heavy hitter. You know, that's that's the big power lifter of the scotch industry. That's where they make their money. Um, so if you go back and and do a little history, you know when when scotch was first discovered. Everything was single malts because they didn't have grain whiskey. Right. It wasn't until the advent of the continuous still, the coffee still in the early 1800s that you started getting mass production of neutral grain spirits, basically. Cranking it out. Cranking it out night and day. They could just go, go, go. They never had to stop. And so they're putting out thousands and thousands and thousands of liters of, of spirit. Right. So they're taking that grain whiskey and 
blending it together with the malt whiskey to give it some added character. Let's define that for, for anybody that's watching at home that doesn't know what the difference between grain and malt is because that's the, the next So question. a single malt whiskey it's is 100% malted barley. Malted barley. That's what I wanted it's, them to hear. It, that's the grain that they use to make right. the single malt scotch. They can use pretty much anything in grain whiskey. Like everything with the kitchen sink, you can just throw it in the thing. Anything and that you can distill. Yeah. So basically you're, you're converting starches to sugars converting the sugars to alcohol, distilling it, and putting it out the door as fast as you possibly can. Okay. And the cheaper the product, the better. Right. Because uh, the goal is to drive down the price of that stuff. And so what they did was now you've got a very inexpensive to make spirit that you can make in mass quantities that's lighter, doesn't have quite the flavor characteristics. And you're going to blend it with malt whiskey to give it a little more oomph and do a blended scotch and sell millions and millions and millions of liters. So the list that you just went through a few minutes ago, you know, Johnny Walker is selling 18 million cases of product a year. Maybe 5% uh, of that is their green label, which is the main malt. Yeah. The rest, of it, that's green. the rest of it's all grain. And, and so there's good money to be made. Even and, your Johnny Walker blue has grain whiskey. And to be honest, I mean, as much as we all love, single malt scotch like and it's popular and a lot of people drink it most of our subscribers that's all they drink that didn't happen though until yeah it's it's a very recent thing and even to this day we are a very small percentage of the market 90 percent or more of people that are drinking scotch it's it's blended scotch that's what they're drinking that's what bars are buying that's what people are ordering that's what they're going into the liquor stores to buy. And to be honest, that makes the companies profitable and drives the production at the distilleries. So let's just talk about how much blended whiskey sold every year. According to the Scotch Whiskey Association's uh, website, 68% of all scotch sold every year is blended scotch. Not, it's just blended scotch. I don't, um, if you want to talk about single malt is only 10%. And then combined single grain, blended grain, and blended malt are 22%. So blended scotch, 68% of it. And then you look at the numbers, 450 bottles of blended scotch is sold every minute worldwide. 450 bottles every minute. Our show's an hour long. Takes 60 times 450. And think about how many bottles of freaking whiskey just moved. It's a lot, man. It's crazy. Um so it, it's a huge, huge market. You guys saw the top 10 that we were talking about a few minutes ago, right? And and a couple of folks, John DeVoe, had made a point saying those were all blends. Yes, Not surprised were. now. Not surprised at all when you look at some of these crazy yeah, numbers. Um, yeah, it, it is unreal, Richie. It's a, it's a lot of whiskey. And, and 18 million, that's just Johnny Walker, brother. I mean, right. that's not talking about yeah. the other nine in that top ten yeah, list. <laughs> J&B's got three, you got right. six here, seven there. I mean, it's it's a lot of booze to be sold. And there's a lot of markets where, you know, I mean, the United States, Great Britain, we, we have fairly easy access, Canada, to, you know, some, some higher end single malts. It's not so difficult for us to get a hold of that. Definitely some other uh, markets around the world. But most of the markets, I mean, you know, stuff like J&B, that's, that's what's on the shelf. You know, you're not you're not finding high end McAllen's, you know, right. or, or things like that. You know, a lot of people that's that's what they have access to. Go on an airplane, any domestic flight here in the states, nine out of ten times you're going to get Dueler's White. That's what you're going to get. You might or be lucky. Johnny Walker. You, you might be lucky to get a Johnny Walker, but I mean, I, that's that's what's out there, and it's a huge, huge, huge market. So let's let's talk about some other things about why why put grain in? Why do they do this? Why, if you look at single malts didn't really get popular here in the States till what, maybe the eighties it started, yeah. started picking up. And now it's, you know, it's a niche thing. It's a popular, it's, it's got, but blends aren't going away. We just proved that with the numbers and even blends are getting into the high end. Look at your Johnny Walker ghost and rare oh. where they're blending in some old shit, you know, some 40 year old Port Ellen, and now they can charge $500 for that bottle of blend, right? You look at some of your, your high end, just regular high ends, your Johnny Walker Blue. What's that go for? 
You'll see right. it anywhere from 250 to what, 170? Yeah. yeah, if you're lucky. Somewhere in that nature. I mean, so malts can be expensive, but they can also be extremely affordable. And I think that's kind of the number I, one reason they put grain. I think in. the affordability drives it. You know, I mean, if you're looking for an entry level market, you're, it, it's all price conscious, right? What can they afford? Right. You're not going for a luxury market. So it's, it's all driven on price at that point. So now you're talking about a couple bucks difference here and there makes a difference on your sales. So if you can put a little bit more grain in there than malt and drive your cost down just a little bit. Under might the sell, you might sell twice the competition. as many bottles. Right. And then that gets them hooked on your brand. And then you can start marketing for the next level up. Right. Right. It's a different price point and category than you're talking about for single malts. Right. I mean, you know, we come on here and we talk about two hundred dollar bottles, five thousand dollar bottles, twenty five grand for eight bottles. Like that's not entry level. Like you have to know what you're doing you're and have the right. uh, the ability to spend that kind of money on eight bottles of whiskey to to do that. Um, but all of these bottles that we have up here are very affordable, very easy to get a hold of. You know, they're they're widely distributed because there's so much of them. Um, Alejandro, I, I agree. I think that there's definitely some cheaper single malts. The, uh, I don't know about single malts, Sub blended 30. malts, blended malts, sub 30. Sure. Um, but I don't know if I've seen a single, I want to stop before I forget this and I'll throw this up here though. Hot dang. Zach Andrews. Zach. Stay tuned, Zach. We're going to, we're going to bust out a couple of your samples here and put them on the bourbon man right here. It'll be good. A few minutes. He's not had these. So I stay tuned now. I'm excited to see what he thinks about it. And I know you are. Um, one of the things that I, I, I crossed um, in researching blends though is, and why you just covered up probably the biggest reason, but here's a, a reason that I think it's overlooked. And I read it from one of the master blenders. So we drink this this uh, cast strength whiskey, and what's one of the things we do when we drink cast strength? We, we, where's the water? I'm put a little bit of this. Well, why do you put water in it? Changes the complexity of that whiskey, yep. opens it up, changes things. This master blender made a point of saying, I use grain whiskeys to open up and show the complexities of the malts that I put in it. And, and I, I was like, you, damn, I've never considered using it as as a watering technique. Instead of watering it down with water, I'm going to water it down with grain spirit because it's neutral. Right. And it, it'll open up that malt. I would say, I, I think that's a unique idea. And I think that you do see that in those mid and high level blended scotches. Talk to you John Leisure I mean? about it. If you're, yeah. if you're spending some money on your scotch and it's a blend, uh, you know, you get some really good stuff. Very interesting scotches that have depth and complexity and are really fun to drink. But I think, some of these entry level ones, it's not necessarily the case. Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll fess up and say, and I think everybody, all four of the dummies will say, we're not the most uh, versed in single grain whiskey. We've not really had uh, our eyes open to, to, I've had a couple of really good ones, some older ones at some whiskey events that I've just been like, damn, I really need to get into this, this little niche. And, and it, expose myself to because I don't know that much about it. I obviously drink it in blends, but I don't have any single. Well, I think it's not as it's not as prevalent in our market. So it's, it's much more affordable. affordable to get. It's much more affordable for the older stuff, but it's also much lighter. And and so you've really got to dig for it. Mm. Like have you had many like single older grain. grain whiskeys? Have you tried any? There I mean it is what you, exactly what you would think it would be. Like it's very light. Yeah. They're very approachable, but if you're looking for, like, you can spend all day really thinking about it, and it's it's tough. It gets tough. Everybody say hi, Lee. Hi, Lee. Hi, Lee. I put you up there because you're here. You're just in time for us to open this one. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna get into another blend. So um, we we've got a, we I pulled a couple other blends just to t since we were talking about blends. Um, not all are smoky. Obviously, the the Johnny Walker Black is. Um, and the difference between this is those two, these two have grain in them. These two are single malt or blended malts, excuse me. Um, this has been sitting on the bar for a long time. Uh, this bottle was given to me by a friend. Uh, every time they come to visit, she usually brings some old bottle that she inherited from a, a late uncle who was a Scotch guy. And um, 
so this was a bottle. This is a liter, isn't it? Yeah. This is the big boy. It's a Bell's Old Scotch Whiskey, 100% Scotch whiskeys, distilled, blended, and bottled in Scotland. Distillers, Perth, Scotland. Is Bell's that number 10? Bell's yep. was number 10 mm -hmm. on the list. So, a four you go. <laughs> Crack that open, man. Oh, well, yeah. Let's do this, man. Let's see what this has got. Aaron, I won't say your last name just to keep you innocent. Thank you so much. I'm a... Uh, I'm pretty excited because this was probably 80s as well. Yeah, I, I this is probably mid 80s. I know I did the research on it a long time ago, and I've got it on some the, document on my computer. I will say the fun part about drinking these blends from that era is you're talking about around the time that the the whiskey distillery started to go bust. The market was crashing a little bit. Most of all, but blends, blends. I mean, from this JMP, says blends old. back then are good. Old scotch whiskey, so it must be old, right? They were really putting. Here's the thing about it, you guys. So right now, today, 2020, you go buy yourself a blended malt, uh, a blended whiskey, uh, a JMB. You go to C CBS, the pharmacy, and you buy a JMB, right? Yeah. You're not getting the best malt whiskey in that bottle because single malts are popular right it's now. Got a better nose so than most of the, the are good. good malts are going oh, to single damn. malt bottlings. You're probably getting the subpar malts in your blends. <laughs> but back really in the good. 80s, single malts weren't popular. They weren't a thing. Nobody cared about it. So all that good malt whiskey was going into the blends. I'll get to it. Is it really good? Oh, it is really good. <laughs> Just put that away. Just grab that glass and try some. It's I really I gotta good. Wash this out. Give me um, I need some water. <laughs> I, I love trying these older ones because, you know, everything that we have had that's that's a modern blend, yeah, they're dumping more grain in it. And and you think back about, you know, stuff that was going on in the, you know, 70s, 80s, everybody was drinking blended scotches. And you're like, man, why wouldn't they have, I mean, I know single malts weren't a thing back then, but hey, couldn't you find something better? <laughs> but then you try one of these and you're like, oh, that's actually really great man i mean that's that's really nice to... did you try it I, I, the nose is a lot exceeded so, my expectations at first I'll see like, what everyone's saying about this smash that like button dang zach killing me zach stays up we're gonna leave zach up for a little while hang on a second cheers i'm not gonna try this guy yet i'm gonna cheers to you thank you zach thank you. appreciate it, man you know what we haven't said all damn night wheelhouse 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 well, you'll say it when you tag a sip of that other one. I'm waiting patiently for you to try it, man. It's good. I'm going to leave Zach Andrew up there until somebody takes him down. <laughs> uh, whis Bell's is the only whiskey I've seen in my dad's house. One bottle would last years. All right, whiskey mystery. So, Phil, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is that because he didn't drink that often? or was I, I, I got to assume it wasn't bad or he wouldn't have had it. Um, I'm interested to see what this is. I don't is think this would last a month at my house. <laughs> What'd you think? That's good. Right? That's good <laughs> it's stuff really right good. there. Dude, it's a liter blend. So think about it. It's probably mid 80s, maybe early 80s. And it was probably 12 bucks. I mean, <laughs> I was going to say I, between 10 and 15 myself. <laughs> for a, buy me a liter for my birthday. <laughs> 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 okay. So I do smell grain in it. I, I get that. That's there. <laughs> fruity though. Yeah, it's it's fruity. It's got some nice apple. I was gonna yeah. say there's a uh, there's like apple. cinnamon and some baking Ooh. spices on there. Hello, sweetheart. Pie crust. Pie crust. Cobbler crust. Oh man, it's it's nice. It's, it, it just really is nice. Hi, Molly. My favorite dog. My favorite dog. Well, wow. Damn right. <laughs> hey, Tom. Uh, it, the finish just is tricky. Uh, hang on a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This guy deserves some time. This guy deserves some time. That's Mr. Sunday Evening Scotch. He took Zag down from $199 at $2. Now that right there is a price is right watching dude. I'm all about that, man. I'm with you, Mike. I'm here, brother. We, we got another one down Mr. there too. Board. We need to talk about this. I'm gonna let this thing open up for a second. But we do I want to scroll down. Let me see if maybe Zach said something about it. I'm sure he did. <laughs> so Tom has an interesting point, and here's one that we really didn't actually talk too much about whiskey. was uh, compass box. 
So yeah, because uh, we don't have many compass boxes on the boat. Well, he was right? talking about he this, was talking about that this big guy right here. Oh, yeah, I mean killed, it's an empty. Uh, so the only compass box that we've got that's got liquid in it that we're willing to drink right now is this, and that's not even a whiskey. Technically no. Technically no. Because of because they the, didn't age it because the years. one little Glencairn glass of of what did he pour in it? I don't uh, even I remember. can't even it's, remember. Somebody tell me the story, stranger and stranger, but it was very John Glazer esque. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to piss somebody he off. He thumbs his nose at the world. I Good love for him. And you know what? But he still makes great he's, freaking he's, spirits. And he's such a soft spoken guy. He's just funny to me. Yeah. He's, a, he's brilliant, though. So, uh, um, so anyway, I, I wanted to comment. Whiskey Music says Colonel Lee Whiskey was in my dad's house. Are you guys familiar Colonel with Lee this? Whiskey. Are you familiar no, with I'll that? look at it. So there, there goes Mike. Uncle Google's going to tell him what it is. My, uh, my dad was an Irish whiskey guy, and he still is. Uh oh, uh -oh. Bob H. Bob H. Might, might Bob H. Might run this out because um, KB's not on. So become a patron; it's a blast, Bob. It is, and um, the patrons are the ones that makes us. You yeah. guys keep us going. So yep. I agree with you, Bob. Cheers to you, and whiskey wheelhouse. I will say that the one thing that has come out of about. all of the craziness this year. Has been the advent of us doing the pre and post zooms. They're a lot of fun. Like you know, we did the. That's, uh, that's, that's hot, man. Bourbon. We did the oh, we did the voice chat for probably a year. Who give or who take posted nine months? Colonel Lee. Uh, let me scroll up. Right, yeah, up. right here, right. Whiskey music. Colonel Lee whiskey was, was that in my dad's house? Kentucky Street. Is this Kentucky? Yeah, you got it. I can see it. Kentucky Straight. Is that it? Is that the label that was in your dad's house? To me, that label just looks hot, screams hot. <laughs> well, there's a bottled and bond and then a regular. So there's a 40, there's an 80 proof, and then there's the 100 proof. Bob going for the so, win. <laughs> he usually does. So what's our what's our consensus on blends? What are we what are we thinking about them right now? I appreciate them. I, my personal take is I, I definitely don't stub my nose at blends. Um, obviously, I love single cask, uh, cask strength, single malts, right? I, I mean, but there's a lot to offer in blends. I agree. Um, and I'm not even a guy that mixes, you guys. I'm not a, a mixed drink maker. I mean, I drink whiskey. Um, I'll drink a mixed drink if someone knows what they're doing when they make it for me. If you would have made yeah, I'll enjoy that. But at the end of the day, uh, I, like, I, like, I like scotch, and I don't care if it's got grain in it or not. Um, I'll say that there are some bad ones, you yep. know, you can go overboard with it and get some piss poor grain in there. But, um, I am very interested in the single grain realm, but I'm blown away about the numbers researching this and looking at the numbers of blended malt, blended scotch that's sold globally. I'm like, Jesus H man, that, that, that's a lot of freaking whiskey. Yep. Um, and that's not even where I'm sitting. You know what I mean? Right. So I, 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 think that blends are something that everybody should be into. You should try them. You should have some. If you're a beginner, it's not a bad place to start. It's no, not. It's affordable to get in. Um, right. I will say, though, that I, I can appreciate blends that are doing it right. You know what I mean? So, like, this bottle right here, this Bell's, I drink that all night. It's good stuff. Am I wrong? Uh, I mean, delicious. it's really nice. This is... Really, this is... Now, then you you turn around and you go and you buy you know a Cuddy Sark like a a, a, a new, new bottle a Cuddy Sark not not great man uh, so I, I think that you can overdo it on the grain if you're using the grain to bring out nice things in the malt then I think you're doing doing it the right way if you're doing it to just dump some stuff together to go make a buck maybe that's not the right way to do it well. I agree with you on the, the, there are blends out there that are putting out quality product. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. And, and and I think these are two fine examples of that. Mm -hmm. There are blends out there that are literally just cranking out product, right? And yep. the numbers speak to that. You see it when you look at that number and you're like, Jesus, there's that many blends going on. Sure. Because they're just, those grain distilleries, they're just, they're pumping, man. Nine four seven, baby. Yep. Yep. <laughs> How much can you give me? They're doing it up. So, you know, I think that it's worth exploring some of the blends. Uh, you know, there's there's plenty of really nice blended scotches out there, blended malts um, that you can explore and get something out of that I think are worth trying out. And it's not going to break your bank to do it for the most part. There are some expensive ones.
There are some expensive ones, and don't get me wrong, there are some really good grain whiskeys out there as grain scotch, as single grains. I've had a few um, up at uh, TV's house, man. i blown away. I'm like, holy shit, I didn't yep. realize grain could offer that. But I also do say that I think you need to have a little bit of whiskey experience. You need to have your palate needs to be a little bit refined. You need to be able to pull out some of that light subtlety because it is light. and there, it's, it's very light. neutral. Um, but when you are able to, you're like, wow. Yep. Very creamy well and buttery and yeah, yeah very yeah. nice. Um, and if you're looking for this bells, you're gonna have to travel back in time. Is someone looking for that one? Somebody said something about buying some bells, and this one's so probably not what you're gonna get at the store right now. Although I'll say they were number ten on the best global brands of 2019, so they're they're still doing stuff. Yeah. Um, this one was just gifted uh, to to me by a friend that you know, her uncle was a Scotch drinker and he had a whole foot locker military foot locker full of bottles when he passed away and she ended up with it so she brings me a bottle when they come over and this was in one of the gift bags that she brought and i was like all right so I, it's been literally sitting on sean's shelf for probably eight months and i haven't i haven't touched it you know we were waiting on you know there's a lot of stuff that sits back here until it's time so yeah and and i have a feeling that uh we're gonna have some fun with this bottle and i guarantee sure. you some other folks are gonna have some fun with this bottle and uh, with a liter bottle we'll, we'll we'll make sure this one gets around a little bit and have some fun i mean who says it this guy right here says it right what's he say scotch uh whiskey isn't good until it's shared or something yep. i mean i mean at the end of the day that's where it is you got to share your whiskey so um it's 1101 i'm in no hurry wow. i'm in no hurry you know, are you guys in a hurry? Do we need to shut it down and go to the patron post show? Or do you guys want to keep going? To, to be honest, I'm excited that we made this thing fire up. And I'm just going to tell you guys, tomorrow's a federal holiday, so I'm not working. I'm, you work Fridays? <laughs> <laughs> that was cold blood. Work, this guy doesn't work Fridays. <laughs> no, uh, tomorrow, which is supposed to be a work day, but it's a federal holiday, so it's not. And uh, if the grass needs cut, the boy's gonna do it. So, I, hell, I'll have another. I'm I'm working all day, all day. Look at Tom says, keep it going. It's not whiskey until it's shared. That is the phrase I was looking for, Mike. Thank you. I told you you were gonna that's like why it. I've, this is the <laughs> just. That's why I've killed about probably twenty two, twenty three bottles at my house in the last really? couple months. Yeah. So uh, you're not the one painting the basement? I saw pictures of it on Facebook. You know, you know what we need to do real quick. <laughs> yeah. This guy needs to try that Texas Oh whiskey. yeah, we got to keep this spinning, Zach Andrews. Hey, baby. So <laughs> check <laughs> out. So I don't know if you guys watched the show. This is a couple weeks, uh, maybe two months ago or so. Um, one of our patrons, Zach. He's. Uh, you go from. It was a couple of weeks. A couple no, months ago. A couple Dude, months. Yeah, right. Come on. Because he so, doesn't work Fridays. Zach sends us a couple of bottles. Zach's a Texas boy. Um, and Texas folk are proud of Texas. <laughs> if one thing is for sure. And so he sends us some Balconies. Never had it. We'll, we'll give it a shot. I sat on it for, damn, a month because of this whole freaking Corona thing. You know, I wanted to wait till we were all together. Finally, it didn't happen. We just had to make it. So I poured it into sample bottles and we did it on one of the live shows where we were all, you know, in our own yep. houses. And um, this is what I have left. I brought it to Sean's tonight because this dude is here and this dude's palate is bourbon trained, man. I mean, it, it, we're, I'm calibrated on the scotch. He's calibrated on the bourbon. So, Zach, we're going to see what Mike's got to Don't say push it that about far. Balcones Peated and that Balcones French Oak. Um, Look at the color on that, boys. It's a little different than the scotches we've been drinking tonight. Pull that dude a fresh glass and let's give him the French. How, how, long, how long do they age that stuff for? Like so two Zach, weeks, three weeks. Talk to <laughs> two or three weeks. <laughs> this is aged for 13 and a half days. I know. <laughs> and then it becomes out that dark. All right. All right. You got to start with the French oak because the so, other one's peed. Hang on so. a second, man. Hang on a second. Bob, you still got the honors, but I got to at least do this, man. Daniel for Hold Sean on. because of the sleepless life of a chef. I'm he's a, not he's not cooking anymore, Daniel. Let's be yes. I, I do cook, cook he's but cooking. now it's a sleepless life of an entrepreneur. Of an entrepreneur, this dude's busier it's, than I'll get out, and he's opening up number two. Congratulations cheers. on that, by the way. Thanks, Daniel. Wheelhouse. Mm. Mm -mm. Bob, you're still on hold. Actually, you might be done because it, it, it zapped up. So we're going to go to here. Zach, 
There you Falcons. go, buddy. Talk to us about this, Zach. Put water, it. Other water down there. French oak uh, is 36 months. 36 no. months. No, we don't. No, we might have some in the fridge over there. Molly, go get us some water. water. <laughs> so um, I'll go get it. But here, you drive Ooh. this. Uh, where's this? Zach says that Texas peated is 36 months. Uh, French oak is 36 so months. So both of these are three year olds. I'll get some water. Well, that'll. Or did you get some? And I believe they're both like 65 plus. <laughs> For what? ABV or uh, yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they bring the they bring the heat, man. They're not subtle in that way. <laughs> Big and bold. Yeah, it's kind of looks like drinking flat coke. <laughs> it actually it does, doesn't it? Yeah. I think they that is not available around here, Falcons. Not these. Not these. Mm -mm. Ah. That's why he sent them to us. Oh, okay. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. All right. <laughs> clear some, clear All some right. taste buds. From so you went French Bell first, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm very anxious to see what you think about that. Zach sent uh, sent two full bottles for us to review on it, and I so I poured them out into five ounce samples to to the guys so we could get through it because I really thought we were going to do it behind the bar here, but that can happen. The VID said no. Sixty five. <laughs> Maybe the wheels are off. No, the Even wheels are off. Come on, too. Bob. We're far from the wheels being off. We're working on it. We're trying to spin them off. Everything's at forty percent. I've always been told that the Balcones has been extremely different from regular bourbon. Oh yeah, and and stuff like that. So it's interesting. Yeah. I it's I'm not a bourbon fan. It's pretty freaking good. <laughs> it's well, it's not good. bourbon, right? right. It's so, not bourbon. It 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 doesn't have that bourbon. It doesn't sweetness. have that. Yeah, it doesn't have that strong vanilla. Indiana just started getting it's their core the range, Justin says. Their standard single malt, baby blue, and pot still bourbon so far he's seen here in, in Indiana. Justin is in Noblesville, I think. He, I believe so, I yes. think that's right. I'm trying to pull it together. That's not bourbon. It's a single malt, says Steve. Yes. We corrected it. We're working on it. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not a bourbon guy. It's after 11. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh, all bets are off at this point, right, man. Yeah. I'm oh, half tempted to try right. to, to sample to see if I could turn on the Molly cam, but I don't want to screw things up. We, we've done good. You can try it. No, and then all of a sudden We're, it goes after, to shit. It's after 11. And then what? I want to see. Go to everybody, everybody wants to see what he's got okay. to say about this. <laughs> yes. No. See, I was right. I was right. I was talking about Justin this weekend, man. He reminds me of uh, my wife's nephew. He looked just like my wife's nephew, so... <laughs> These are both Texas single malts. Wow, that's heavy wood. Yeah. Heavy wood. Heavy wood. <laughs> am I, am so I chewing? Zach, he's like, heavy wood. That's what he said. Am, look, look, you see that? Am I, am I chewing on a yes. on piece a, of oak? Yes, piece you are. Piece of oak? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> trying to pull something else out. It, put, that, put, put some water on it. Have you put some water on it? Have I? Not yet? Not yet. Okay, that was good. My first uh, that's what I want. Oh, so, put, yeah. Put you, some water on it. You, it it opens up. Let it sit there. Let that, let that pass. Put some water in We out of milk. <laughs> <laughs> but we out of milk. Put some water. Oh, well, baby, this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yo. Oh, that's you awesome. said Texas heat's hitting you, man. That's what oh, my I gosh. said. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Ron to Jeremy Heavywood. Well... <laughs> Ron's kind of in trouble, Tom. Tom. I think we covered that last week. <laughs> Drop of water <laughs> helps the French elk. Yes, I think it. I mean, what did you say the percentage was on this? 61, 9 or something like that? It's, it's No, it's like 65. 65, something. It, it passed. No, it. I think he said that. For, did you say that for the peated? The Let's 60, scroll up here. 65, Zach, 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 Zach. French oak is 61, okay, 9. Okay, 61, 9. For right, so, uh, I mean, 61 uh, that's, that's a lot of damn yeah it's hard to get past that wood 
It's there, though. <laughs> did I actually say that on camera? Yes, you did. Oh, Jesus. It'll be on the podcast tomorrow. Oh, yeah, Christ. it's on the podcast tomorrow. Oh, Don't worry Christ. about it. It'll be my favorite part when I turn this thing on tomorrow. <laughs> I <know. laughs> actually, I don't know if it'll be on, on tomorrow because Drew's got to do that. I don't even know how to load that up. Yeah, I have no idea how to do that either. Seems Drew just technical. needs to get back from vacation. Who allowed him to go on vacation? I don't know. That mean, I don't know. I didn't see it come across my desk. I would have been declined that. I'd have been like, no. I mean, I, I, I'd do it. I mean, He's got to show me how to do it. Not on a Thursday night. He's not on right now, so we can tell all the smack we want about him. Is what the is. wood's really heavy. Okay, wood heavy. And then now on the second sip, second or third sip, I'm getting almost like a burnt, like burnt fruit. Like if you take... Like, like if you're cooking a, it down. Yeah, and, if you take yeah. a red apple and then throw it on throw it on some heat and just let it char. Just, just char. Char the shit out of it. And that's the French oak. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, of course, I don't taste any peat. No. So. Right. But you'll like the the peat. It is interesting as well. I, so, I. But yeah, so thoroughly enjoy all of it. Daniel, uh, Daniel's looking forward to you hitting the peated one. Am I? Am I getting? Am I getting a little? Maybe a little. If you put some. Son of a bitch. Yeah. If you me. put some hard. Yeah. If you put some fruit. <laughs> burn the shit out of it. And maybe just a sprinkle, right, just a slight <laughs> bit of, some of that? cinnamon on top of it while it's burning. And I'm in. Charred on the top. Stand down, Zach. We got this. Give me that. But that French, man, that French oak barrel is That's just. A little, little something. Man, that is kicking in. Kicking you right in the ass. Wow. <laughs> See? <laughs> He's uh, all right, so it reminds me of Alconi's French oak again. I've had, you know, those you can buy those little staves, char staves, at some liquor stores. Yep. To put in your bottle if you want yep. to add a little bit more. It's like you grab one of those, you take a chunk, and then take a sip. Yeah. I mean, it's That's it, it, rich. it dries your mouth out. There's so oh, much yeah. wood and tannin in it, but. It's got such nice, like subtle spices on the back end. It's like cinnamon sticks. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it's in that, yeah, like I said, it was it's in that burnt fruit, red fruit, and then throw the little tap some cinnamon on top of it. And then just I'm thinking like burn the shit out of it. Burnt candy apple. Yeah. You know what I mean? Damn. That's nice. There's a ton of flavors going on there. Oh, yeah. I can't get them because the inside of my tongue is just flaming. Um, let, let that freaking, yeah, yeah. let that oh, peep, yeah. let that, let, uh, not peep, but let that ABV tame down a little bit. There's um, there's a lot going on there. But, man, that ABV just hit me. So, Tom, Drew was afraid to take Black Dynamite. He didn't take the, uh, the Tesla, so he does not have... Good connection there, buddy. <laughs> but Elon still has like another 250 satellites to put in the orbit before he launches this whole global. What's he waiting on? I don't know. Oh, I... now now it's uh, Fig okay. Newton. Okay. Fig Newton. I can see that coming. Just uh, without tasting with that water, I can see that's how it's going to evolve. God, the nose is wonderful after you water it down a little Not bit. Not that cheap shit, Fig Newton. No, like the premium stuff, right? right? Like, like you went to a bakery and somebody's grandma's recipe for fig newtons yeah, was made, not, right? Not your Can Walmart I? bullshit. Yeah, like they went and bought figs and made fig newtons because there's little chunks of figs in it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I wish I could because it's I, quote you and put it on screen. Who? What? Yeah, not that oh. fake shit, fig newton. No, no, not. <laughs> Oh really? It goes with it goes you with know that what I'm talking about. It goes with coy. taking that <laughs> pan, putting that fruit in it, putting the cinnamon in it, putting a little water, liquiding it up, making it thick, thick, thickening it down, thickening it right. down, right, and then putting it on that almost between like a like a shortbread cookie, shortbread, or, yeah. but a wood fired oven shortbread cookie. So I definitely get that fig. It's really it's, good, man. It's thick. It's heavy on the nose. It's and they don't have this here. No, I would love to sit in my driveway 
and as work I usually on this. do. You do. Well, and show up with that's this you. for you go, a couple of my neighbors and say, dude, try this. Work on that. Really yeah. like, what? I mean, that's a glass you would work on, right? This is not oh, yeah. something you're kicking back. You're you're going to be sniffing this for 30 minutes going, damn. But we don't have 30 minutes to finish it. No, we don't. <laughs> yeah, we got to go to the peak. <laughs> it, it's good, Zach. I'll Zach, give you that much. Zach, is this, is this cast ring considered... A cast strength? No, it's not. It's 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 not listed as cast strength. It's just the ABV they list. They they, they, have, to, in, so they have to water it, it down to, to get it. It has to be cast strength. <laughs> yeah, but it's normally like ninety five. They, they gotta wear a hazmat like suit clear. and they pour it out. Sunday evening scotch, Mike. I'm a driveway sipper too. <laughs> you Dude, no you gotta idea, come Mike. down. You're in the wrong neighborhood, buddy. I you know. Come over here. <laughs> I fell asleep in my driveway today for a little bit. I almost wasn't sure I was gonna make it. <laughs> We're like, man, chug that freaking okay. Try that one. wings and get down here. This is it's good. Really it, nice. It is very man. good. Really nice. I've emptied many a bottle in my driveway in the last three or four months. It's gonna have goals. Who doesn't like goals? That's why. That's why I started out with the. Ball player O2 because I emptied all my ball player. Really? Should have been coming over here. Yep. You're out of ball player. Yes. You have no ball player 90. I have no ball. He doesn't have I don't wear it all. I don't I gotta tell you something. I respect any. the hell out of you for doing that. Dude, you you just do it. I look at the the end of you know stuff that I just adore and I'm like, I can't do it because I don't want you to die. I know, but I was like, screw it. Who cares? Good for you, dude. That's why like, you that's buy it. That's what it's for. That's what it's because my my neighbor Jason, you know Jason. Mm -hmm. Some of the some of you guys, we brought him over here a couple yep. times. Him and I will just sit and. But that's what that's why you buy the so, whiskey. Tom's coming down to sit in your driveway. I hope so. Hell yeah! <laughs> Holy shnikes! He better be. So now you're going to move into the peated Peter. version. All right. No, we didn't use tonight. You know, John, I these? agree. I, I, no, I have not. But I, I admire Mike for doing that. I mean, you buy the whiskey to drink it. And and I've come to learn. Molly I've, I've started to finally accept that there'll always be another something, another love, right? So SMW has helped me, Give me a deal in my understand that. Um, Travis Faircloth, Travis, if you're still on, you probably sure. logged off because it cool. is getting late. Um Man, you know, there are, there are bottles that come sweet. across yeah, the market. And you're like, oh, my God, get time, them, I gotta get them. And then you miss it. And you're like, ah. Sure. And you're, uh, I get upset about it. I'm like, you know what? There'll be another one tomorrow or next week. So right. drink it. Enjoy it. That's why you bought it. I mean, if there's something special to hang on to, you know, that you want to hold for your son's graduation no. or a special occasion, that's I get that. I mean, uh, you know, I've, I've got bottles that I haven't opened. Sure. Sure. And, and I slap Andrew's hands every time he's coming behind the bar. But um, I mean, it, that's not to say that I wouldn't open them. I'm do you know, I, okay. I, want, you I don't know, believe in rescue. Them, that and this open. is the sixty-five point three. Yeah. I think you said we yeah. we only have one bottle on this bar that's that sacred. I don't think I can open. No, I agree. What's that? That bottle Spaniard. of the Spaniard. Oh yeah, I can't open that. And it's sign. That's why too. So. Yeah. And it's, it's literally not, irreplaceable. It's, it's not the story of the Spaniard. It's, it's the actual the Spaniard. Spaniard. <laughs> right. It's, it's the bottle we got at the Spaniard bar the night we interviewed John Glazier about making the Spaniard. And then making the story of the Spaniard. And so, I, yeah, I don't. And it's signed by John. Did you, it was given to us by the owner of the bar. Did I, you get to try? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you oh, yeah. have. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. That's good. And I, I don't know if I can open that bottle. I, you say that now. I'm sure we will. Yeah, you Someday say that now. it'll just be the right time and we'll open it, you know? And, and it is what it is. Ooh. You know what? When we get Mike <laughs> down here. <laughs> oh, what do we got here? <laughs> Oh. oh, all right, Zach. Mike oh. is a, Zach even what? said, look, 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 Zach's like, here we go. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Oh, it's like, it's not your typical peat. It's no, it's it's not. like a sugared down peat. Yes. Oh my gosh. 
You know, I was thinking about that $25,000 eight bottle collection and the fact that they give you a 20 centiliter bottle on the side. You know that we'd open the big bottles and save the little bottle, right? <laughs> That'd be a good point. That'd be a good thing. Yeah, I'm down with that. <laughs> and it'd probably be worth more money because nobody would save those. And Scotch for Dummies <laughs> doesn't have 25K to blow on it just yet. We're working on it. We're making some investments. We're trying. <laughs> right? We're working on it, man. Give us a minute. <laughs> you know, I did want to, I wanted to make a point. I know we're 20 minutes over and, oh my, and everybody was cool my with gosh, that. I'm, um, do one I? of the points that I want to make is this morning, this morning, I got a notification on my phone from American Airlines, popped up in the little top bar. It said, it's time to check in for your flight. And my wife was sitting there with her laptop and I'm oh, got my cup of coffee. It's like 625. And I'm like, what flight the hell are they talking about? Where am I supposed to be going? So I open it up. And I'm like, it says that I'm supposed to be checking in from LH. And she's like, yeah, that's London Heathrow. We're supposed to be coming home from Scotland right now. Yep. Thanks, American. I canceled that flight like three or four months ago. You didn't remind me that I needed to check in for it. That that was like salt. I Cold mean, blooded. I was like, exactly. I'm like, I did. I, I should have just poured the coffee out, and went back to bed. I was so pissed. I'm like, I, we literally were supposed to be on a yeah. flight right now, coming back from Scotland from the yeah. trip of our life. We should have looked like we went to Wally World. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Heart Heart closed. Closed. <laughs> Freaking BB gun, shoot somebody. I, I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to be way the hell off, but I'm like a peat soaked in orange marmalade. There you go, yeah. Zach. It's a peat soaked orange like marmalade. An... Mm -hmm. That's what I smell. So, like, did you read Whiskey Mysteries? I'm going to put them up. Ooh, that's hot. That? So we should have got John Glazier to open it. Well, we did. <laughs> John did open one. And then we all smelled it, and he said, nope, that's cork. And then we got a master class from John Glazier on a corked whiskey and what he got out of it. And he had it sent he back to his pissed. lab. So he could, yeah, he was You said hot. he was pissed. And, and then we had to get a new bottle so he, he can open it so we could pour something out. Uh, it was it was a very interesting. We had a great time. And now was that, that the the Spaniard? Yeah, yeah, that was a bottle. Of, so no, it was the no, story. that was the story. Oh, the story. Spaniard. Right, but we so had, you know that was right. Yeah, completely dumb. Well, he didn't dump. No, he he, he, he took bottled it, and oh. took it home. He oh. wanted it to go home because he wanted to go to his cork manufacturer say, and say, "What the hell? This is what's going on." I mean, honestly, it was eye opening to me. I was like, "I don't know what the hell you're talking about, cork." And he's like, and he gave us a lesson. He educated us on smell it. And you're like. Well, no shit. You right. Know? And I didn't realize the market and the industry and the expenses and the costs that go into cork manufacturing. Yeah. It's, what else am I it's not free. No, it's not. And it's not. You can tell the ones that go cheap. Think about how many corks are made well, globally every year. The, the best part about that whole thing was we were in New York to go to the Whiskey Expo. And we had VIP tickets, oh, so yeah. we got to go in early. Exactly. And there was a Sounds, bottle of yeah, Lefroy? like an orange marmalade. Yes, true. We're still going. Was it Lafroy? Bomore. Bomore. Pete. The and it was old, like was a thirty or old something. Bomore. They were pouring. And Andrew called him out on it. He was like, "Look, that that bottle's corked. It's not any good. You guys shouldn't be serving that." And they didn't believe him, but it was corked. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I Ballsy wouldn't of say... Andrew to say it. <laughs> You're Texas <laughs> barbecue. I am. I am yep. totally. Zach said Texas barbecue. Now I'm like that. That's what's making, and that's hitting some triggers. No one knows how to turn it off. <laughs> the recession collection. <laughs> yeah. Drew, that one's for you. Phil is right. We do not know how to turn. We're just going to keep off. going we'll until you get going. back. So <laughs> get on the road, brother. No. <laughs> nah. We want to hear Mike's impressions. Hey, everybody, on this one. everybody says, you know, when you're sniffing, when you're tasting, if somebody says something, it starts triggering stuff in your head. And so, like I was saying, the orange marmalade, and then Zach was saying, like a Texas barbecue. I'm not saying a pork barbecue, maybe a beef rib barbecue. Fair enough. A little, little not, brisket. Not, short not bacon, because it, I don't smell bacon. Right, but you're getting those deeper, richer, you did water, right? Flavors. Hell no, I didn't. 
You need no. to try it. Got, got, I don't know if this one needs it. No, I, just, I think you need to just to see what it does. Oh. That's, it's, it's wonderful oh, stuff, that's man. That's wonderful. Yes, that is phenomenal. One so what's that bottle go for, Zach? Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. out of curiosity. Talk to and us we about can't the price get it point. here yet, right? Not yet. We can't get it here. Well, you, you know, you can get it here. We know a guy that's had Bobby, shipping problems this is before. The <laughs> he, he says Zach no water. Says no water. And Zach says no water no. again. I'm I'm a high ABV guy. Oh, now, so am so. I, but I, I've got to put water well, on to test it. Just to, maybe I'll This is take the out, peated Balcones, Bob. Maybe, maybe I'll take out half of this and then add a little. Yeah, I'm not saying don't enjoy it. Because that's all we got left. Because, but wow, I, this is. We do know a guy. <laughs> Zach Andrews. Oh man! And then I go to this one. It's all bubble gum. It's all good. <laughs> Is that all juicy good? fruit? Or I, what? I like. I like I when I take. Mean. I like when I take the sip. <laughs> God, and I get that. Sweet. Get that barbecue, and then There's I inhale through my nose, and then that's when I get the peak. Yeah, I like that part. It yeah, it's has, not overpowering. It's, it has. You take the sniff. You drink. And then I, oh, get yeah. the, I get the I, barbecue, right. I get the orange marmalade, right. and then I inhale through my nose, and then then, it, right. then the piece so kicks in. What's the how does uh what's the story, Zach, on how Balcones peats this? Yeah, that we that covered it already, super... I know, but I uh, um I think they fly in peat from Scotland and they peat their own barley no i thought there was a, a peated a company that they buy yeah there's peat in texas remember that that dude had i'm asking a peat yeah let's farm, ask, i guess let's you would call it um and they used that because it was texas peat texas peat's some damn so good hot sauce like you know the irony the about texas armadillos peat? you can't buy texas peat hot sauce in texas i will i will say <laughs> they're not missing anything oh, i love that shit yeah, it's okay there, yeah, there's a local distiller here in Indianapolis that tries to do a peated. Really? That. I These think, guys pull this, it off. I think Falcon has done a good job. So, I think they've done I, will, a I didn't job. enjoy it. I'll just say, I, I won't say who it is, but I but did you not didn't enjoy, enjoy that. It. What do you think? And this is fantastic. You would own a bottle of this on your yes, bar? Yes, I would. Worth $70? The only real source of peat in Texas is probably in protected because swamp because land. the ABV because everybody knows that I love my Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and that's usually <laughs> around one twenty anywhere between one twenty and one thirty eight let's say because of the high <laughs> ABV I like this there you go there you go all right hey you know what hang on Mike what what was your comment our best to Depot what did I miss is Depot okay. What? Oh, yes. Phil's off to watch a movie with Deepa. Okay. Bye, Phil. Um, so anyway, I think that might be wrapping up for us anyway. Yep. So guys, blended scotch. Thank you, Zach. That's um, fantastic. Naked grouse. Good stuff, man. Go if you don't if you haven't explored some some blended scotches, I, I think that there's some stuff out there that's worth exploring. Absolutely. And if you can get your hands on some of the <laughs> older stuff like it's really good man sean and um, i always talk about we need to go dusty hunting this would be like I would, dusty hunting. I, I would. stuff like this would be like estate sale stuff like yeah. like some dude passes away and they've got like an old bottle that they just never got around to opening well it's been cash. sitting there for 80 bucks i read about it for all 80 the time. years you know i mean read it. about it all the time and you're like hey you know what i'll give you 10 bucks for that and they're like, oh my god i can't believe i got 10 bucks for this dusty old bottle and you're like i know i'm i'm really doing you a favor right <laughs> you take I, it put it on the youtube <laughs> channel and be like holy shit <laughs> so there you go Drewby Doo we missed you tonight brother. guys thanks for joining us happy Thursday fellas that's the Drew wheelhouse to you we did not see Andrew on the comments I'm calling him out right now he right? won't see this anyway so hang on a second we've got we got a new, new member, member. Uh -oh. Preston, Preston. Preston. right on Preston we're getting thanks ready for to joining the us. show but thanks for joining and uh, we're on every Thursday night guys Next week, we got a review coming up on Monday, another live show yep. on Thursday, trying to get back into the groove of things. I do want to say a shout out and thank you to all the folks that made 11,000 subscribers. That's huge, happen. man. Um, Good job. Guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. To you. Cheers. Cheers to you guys. Hey, have a happy Good and to see safe everybody 4th of again. July. Don't blow anything up that you're not supposed to. Right? Or don't tell us. Cheers, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Love you. See you. See you on the Patreon post show if you're a patron. <laughs>